was today years old when I found this out. Let me show you. All right, I got my Apple Watch here. I'm gonna go to the workout app and I'm gonna start an outdoor walk. And when this outdoor walk starts, it will automatically play a specific playlist. Can you? Oh my gosh! Am I the only one that didn't notice? Don't worry though, hold on, let me, let me pause it. All right, but I'm gonna show you how to do this and a ton of other things in this video, so sit tight, get your iPhones ready. We're gonna get into these tips and tricks, part three. So I did poll you all within my community post and I asked you, what did you want to see next? And this video is it, so we're gonna get right into it. I don't know if you know or not, but you can automatically have your iPhone answer a call after a certain amount of time goes by. Now for me, I don't want that. But there might be somebody out there that does, and this is how you would do it. So the first thing you're gonna do is head into your settings. And if you know me, I like to search for what I'm looking for, especially if it's kind of deep within the settings. So in this case, we're gonna search for auto answer. And boom, we're gonna tap on that. And right here in this section where it says call audio routing and it says automatic, we're gonna tap that. So we're gonna select this option down here at the bottom, turn it on, and then select the amount of time that we want to go by before the phone automatically answers the call for us. All right, so I'm gonna call myself real quick. So it shows my call right there. And now we're gonna, up. Uh, it ain't waste no time. As you can see, the call is already connected. Now, before we go any further, if you happen to be new here, first of all, welcome. I go by Tech Me Out, and on my channel, I like to talk about pretty much in and everything in relation to technology. So if that is something that you're also interested in, you can feel free to hit that subscribe button and that like button if you feel inclined to. Now for this next one. You know how Siri will announce your messages sometimes, especially when you're wearing like your AirPods? There's actually a way you can choose which messages get announced. So if you're interested in customizing that, you're gonna jump into your settings and we're gonna go down to Siri and search and then we're gonna go to announce messages and you're gonna make sure that announce messages with Siri is turned on. And then after that, you're gonna go into messages and this is where you can choose which messages Siri will announce. So you can't do it exactly per contact, but you know, you can at least customize it a little bit more if you ever wanted to. On the topic of messages, one of my favorite features within the Apple ecosystem is the way that it allows you to send or receive messages on your iPhone, iPad, or your Mac. However, if the person happens to be a green bubble, meaning they don't have an iPhone or have iMessage disabled for whatever reason, if that is the case, those messages by default don't automatically appear on those devices. So if you're one of those in that scenario, there's a way that you can actually receive all the messages that get sent to your phone on those devices. First thing you're gonna do, of course, is go into your settings. And once you're in there, we're going to go to messages and then we're gonna to go to text message forwarding. So like I said, this is just gonna let your other Apple devices get your text messages and not just your iMessages. And you can just toggle on the device that you want to receive it on. For my avid mail users, <laughs> there is a way that you can set a specific signature per account or either just a specific signature for all of your email accounts. So to set this up, we're gonna jump right into those settings and we're gonna go to mail. And once we're in here, we're gonna go down to signature. And this is where you can come in and select if you want it to be per email account in terms of what the signature is. And you can just go in and type it in per email account. Or if you want the same signature for all accounts, you go ahead and type that in. And regardless which email account you send an email from, that will be your signature. Now this next one. I feel like we all have found ourselves, at least at some point, I know I have, in a scenario where you give someone your phone to show them something and they, they get real curious. <laughs> Especially little kids, when it comes to them playing games on your phone, you might look again and they're somewhere totally different than where you left them. There's actually a way that you can lock them within a specific app using guided access. Let me just show you. So we're gonna jump into our settings and we're gonna search for guided access. And we're gonna tap on it in the menu there and make sure that is turned on. So if I wanted to lock this specific app, then what I'm gonna do is triple press the power button over here on the right, One, two, three. And down here in the bottom left, we have options. So when you tap on that, this is where you can kind of fine tune guided access. And you can do things like disable the volume or side buttons. You could also set a time limit. So if I wanna make sure that this is enabled for like five minutes or whatever, I can do that right here. And as you can see, I now cannot exit the application, I can't 
go anywhere but within the app. But you can do things like disable the touch so literally all they can do is look at the screen. They can't touch and interact with anything. And look, now <laughs> I can't even scroll the page. So this is not only gonna lock them within the app but also just ensure that they can't even navigate within the application, which is a good scenario, especially when you're doing something like showing a picture. You might not want them to be scrolling all through your gallery. So you can lock them on that photo and they cannot exit out of that. All right, so here's how you can have it play a specific playlist when you start your workout. Do you know how much time this would have saved me in the past, y'all, from going and trying to find the playlist and all that stuff? Here we go. <laughs> so to set this up, you're gonna head into your watch app once you're in there, you're gonna go down to workout right here. And then you're gonna go down to workout playlist. And this is where you can choose the specific playlist that you wanted to play when you start a workout. <sighs> I had no idea. And if you go back to the page here, you can even select if you wanted to play from the beginning or if you wanted to shuffle your playlist, game changer. Another useful trick is the option to turn on noise cancellation during your phone calls so that it cancels out some of the background noise. And you can enable this by jumping into your settings, go into accessibility, and then select audio and visual. And for a little razzle dazzle, if we go back into accessibility and we jump into the AirPods section, so I'm gonna say my AirPods Pro here in this case, you can come in here and turn on the toggle so that noise cancellation will work with just one AirPod. Now for my unlimited data ballers out there, you can enable the option for your photos to update over cellular. So to get it going, we're gonna go into settings and then we're gonna go down to photos and then we're gonna move down to cellular data and then just turn this option on here so that your shared album and your iCloud photos and everything like that will update over cellular. Then you don't have to wait for a Wi-Fi connection for it to do those type of tasks. Next section here, we're gonna jump into the Shortcuts app and have a little fun. So what we're gonna get into are a couple of my personal favorite automations that I think you might find useful. And the first one being the option to set the max volume per Bluetooth device that you connect to. So perfect example, if your phone's turned all the way up and you hop into your car and you connect your phone via Bluetooth to play music, Sometimes you might scare yourself a little bit. I know I have had my scenarios where I've done that. So this will let you set a predefined volume level when you're in scenarios like that. So to get it going, we're gonna go into our Shortcuts app and we're gonna tap on Automation down here. And then we're gonna move up to the plus symbol here on the right and we're gonna tap Create Personal Automation. And we're gonna go down to Bluetooth and then we're gonna select the device, and this is just pulling from my list of you know known Bluetooth devices in which I've connected to. So for demo purposes, I'm gonna just select my AirPods Max here. Now you can set it per device, or you can just make it so that any Bluetooth device that connects to your phone, it'll automatically set the volume at this level. But for demo purposes, I'm gonna hit my AirPods Max here, and I'm gonna hit Done. And then we're gonna tap Next, and then we're gonna select Add Action. And from here, we're gonna search for set volume. And then you can just tap the percentage and adjust it to be whatever you want it to be. And then I'm gonna tap next. And then I'm gonna just hit done. Now, anytime my phone connects to my AirPods Max, it's going to start the volume level at 30%. Now, another automation that I like is setting what will happen after I connect to a specific Bluetooth device. So in similar fashion, Within the Shortcuts app, we're gonna tap that plus symbol on the right, and then we're gonna select Create Personal Automation. And we're gonna move back down to Bluetooth again, and we're gonna tap Choose here next to Device, and once again, I'ma just use my AirPods Max, for example, and I'ma select Done. And then we're gonna tap Next, and Add Action. But this time, we're gonna jump into the Scripting option here. So a good example of you know an app that you might use when you connect to a specific Bluetooth device is for it to open maybe your favorite music player. So I want mine to open Spotify. So I'm gonna select that in the list there. And then I'm gonna tap next to confirm and done. Now this next one's pretty cute because you can set it so that it gives you a specific notification when your battery reaches a certain percentage level. So to set that up, we're gonna hit the plus symbol and we're gonna create personal automation. And once we're in here, we're gonna go down to battery level. And we're gonna set what we want the battery level to be when we get this notification. So if you say equals 50%, 
then whenever your battery percentage gets to that, that's when you'll get the notification. Or you can choose falls below or rises above so that when it gets below that number or above that number, it'll get a notification. But in my case, I want it to be equals to 50% is fine. So I'm gonna select next. Now within here, what we're gonna do is tap on add action and we're going to search for notification. And we're gonna tap on show notification here. And then you're gonna tap where it says hello world or whatever predefined text is for you. And we're gonna change it to whatever you want it to say. I'm gonna say you need to grab that charger. And we're gonna hit next. Now you do wanna turn off the option ask before running so that this automation just automatically runs for you when it hits that percentage level. Now this one's gonna help you stay productive. And that's the option for at a certain time of the day, your phone will automatically go into Do Not Disturb. So within your shortcuts app, we're gonna hit the plus symbol and then we're gonna tap create personal automation and we're gonna choose this option at the top that says time of day. So I want mine's at let's say 8.30 in the morning to go into Do Not Disturb mode. And I want this to repeat every day, but you can fine tune it down there and I'm gonna select next here to confirm. So now we have to add the do not disturb action. And we're gonna do that by selecting add action right here. And then we're gonna search for do not disturb. And we're gonna select set do not disturb. And we're gonna tap here where it says turn do not disturb off and make sure that it says on. And now we can choose how long it'll run. So do not disturb will turn on until and you can choose, you know, the duration that you want it to last. For me, I like for it to ask me each time because, you know, <laughs> my moods change day to day. <laughs> and sometimes I might not want to be bothered for my entire work day. And other days I might not mind an interruption or two. So you can configure that here. So to confirm this, we're going to select next and then make sure we turn off ask before running and then select done. So moving on into our next one. This one's useful if you have an Apple watch. And it's the option for it to automatically change your watch face per a specific action. So to paint a scenario, if you work out and you use a specific watch face, you can actually have it changed to that watch face when you're working out. All right, so to get that going, we're gonna hit the plus symbol in the top right, and then we're gonna select create personal automation. And then we're gonna go down to Apple Watch Workout. And we're gonna say anytime that I start a workout. And you'll notice within here that you can even choose for the watch face to change when you actually choose a specific workout. But in my case, I want it to be any workout. And then I'm gonna select next. Now from here, I'm gonna tap on add action. And what we wanna do is search for watch face. There we go. So I'm gonna hit set watch face right here. And now I can tap on face right here. And then you can choose the watch face that you want to appear anytime that you start a workout. So let's say I wanted it to be my activity one. So after you've chosen the one that you want, you can select next here and then turn off, ask before running. And then to confirm things, we're just gonna hit done. So now anytime I start a workout, it's gonna automatically go to that watch face. That saves you time and allows you to focus because I know I have spent quite a bit of time sometimes before workout, just kind of going through and getting my watch face set up and choosing my playlist that I wanted to listen to. So now it can all happen automatically without me having to do anything other than start my workout. But that's gonna do it for this one, y'all. I do have other, you know, tips and tricks videos that I've done in the past that I'm gonna throw on the screen right now in case you happen to miss them. But I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any tips and tricks or whatever that you might wanna drop down below in the comment section to possibly be featured within the next video. But as always, thanks for taking the time out to let me tech you out.